Hey guys, Blazy here, and welcome to my review of Brother Bear 2, a Disney sequel all about love. Does it hold up to what I think is a 10 out of 10 movie? Well, let's find out. There's spoilers ahead, and wow the intro. So, as I said, this movie is all about love. It is the season of love, aka springtime. Time for the animals to have some fun. <laughs> But first of all, right away, something you notice, Kenai has a new voice. And it's pretty distracting. I do get used to it after a while though, but it is pretty distracting. It's definitely different. Though all the other voices are the same, only Kenai is different. So we see Kenai is happily living his life as a bear with his new little brother, Koda. The two are inseparable. Though he is told by the two moose from the last one, uh, may I say, the title of this movie is Brother Bear 2, The Moose Are On The Loose. The moose are in this movie, more than the first one, but, like, and they even come out to help at the end, but it's still a very weird title when it doesn't focus on them when you think it would then. I, I don't know. So he is told by them that, like, yeah, it's like that kind of season. <laughs> Anyway, so Kenai dreams a flashback <laughs> to his childhood of him playing with a childhood friend, Nita. She almost drowned that day and he gave her an amulet which is important to the story. As you see her all grown up about to be married to a stranger. Oh, traditions, gotta love them. But the spirits are angry. She was already meant to be with someone else. Who is that? Huh, I wonder. Kenai, of course. That amulet signified that, and so she learns from a wise woman played by Wanda Sykes, who I love her sass in this movie, <laughs> that the amulet needs to be burned with Kenai's help during the equinox in a few days. The wise woman uses her wise spirit powers to give Nita the power to talk to animals. So she finds Kenai pretty quickly, might I add. Like, were Kenai and Koda right near the village? Did she really just find it without wanting to any other bears or anything along the way? If I was CinemaSense, I would be sending this. And then like, what does she do when she finds a bear? Attacks, of course. Okay, so Kenai attacked first, but she can now talk to them, so why doesn't she say, Hey, I'm just looking for Kenai, not here to hurt anyone, especially bears. <laughs> but then if we go on to on an adventure, at first Kenai is reluctant because she doesn't want to burn the amulet for some reason. I mean, sure, it has sentimental value, but you haven't seen her in years, and she's human. Ain't no way you're gonna have a chance with her. Oh wait, that's the movie, right? <laughs> so, you, you probably have a chance. <laughs> so along the way, and I do realise I messed up the moose's name in the last review, and I'm probably gonna get it wrong again, because I got it written down in, in a script wrong, because I am an idiot. <laughs> So along the way we have Watt and Took trying to hit on two female moose which Kenai helps out at first and Nita does later. So that's basically another plot or thing happening in the film. Of course the two starts bonding a little, remembering the good old days and later on we find out Nita is afraid of water thanks to her almost drowning as a tile. That's fair enough, I like that idea. And so Kenai says that he will help her and the two become a bit more attached. Koda sees this and starts to think he'll want to become human again. So we have that going on, which is kind of like, really movie? You're gonna make me think like Kenai will leave Koda, his little brother? When this movie is called Brother Bear because he is a bear with human brothers or because he has a brother that is a bear movie? No. I'm being a little bit negative, ain't I? But I don't hate this movie, not at all. I'll definitely nitpick though, as, a, as the first one is one of my favourite Disney movies. But in a way, there's not much going on here at all. There's no villain, so there's no tension. It just goes from one scene to the next, with some funny moments here and there. And yeah, when they do comedy, I like it. I do like these moments in the in the movie. I like the thieving raccoons. I like the moments with with what and two. Kodo and Kenai are great together. But this is just as I said, one scene to get to the next scene to get to the next scene. With a little bit of conflict here and there because they love each other, but they don't. But actually they do. Oh no, now Kenai will leave, but he won't. Maybe he will? Nah, he won't. But I'm going to jump ahead. Koda learns that Kenai won't leave, of course. They burn the amulet and part ways. Koda talks to the spirits with Kenai while Kenai is asleep, saying that it's okay. He knows Kenai loves her, so it's okay to turn him back to human. Because he'll be fine on his own. 
It is sad here because he's talking to his mom more than the spirits. So then Koda goes to get Nina back at her village. Kenai comes running in and everyone's panicking and not listening to Nina. And she's like, hey, don't kill him. Like, she didn't just go in to find a bear and now a bear shows up. Huh. <laughs> So Kenai almost dies by getting pushed off a cliff by the one she, she is supposed to be marrying. So that warns your chances, buddy. <laughs> but he's okay, and learns that Koda asks the spirits to turn him into human. He still turns it down, but she doesn't. She decides to become a bear. So we get another transformation sequence that's nowhere near as good as the original. But I do love the use of, of I do love the use of colour in this one, I have to admit. Even though it kind of shows the animation isn't as good, but it still looks really pretty. They also try to use the theme music used during the spirits, but it's not quite the same. I don't know what happened there. And then they have a wedding with humans and bears all there at the wedding. Yep, must have called a peace treaty for a time or something, even though the humans can't understand the bears. Must have went in, in the mud or something. <laughs> So yeah, that's the movie. I know I haven't spoken greatly about it, but there isn't much to say. It's a typical Disney sequel, but like, so they don't give him like a love interest in the first movie, so here she is in the second kind of thing. But I will say the animation is still really good. There isn't really like a drop in quality besides like when the spirits show up, but that's about it. Everything else looks pretty good. The music, while I don't think is as good, it's still very beautifully sung with great lyrics. I'll give it that. I like what and Tuig for comic relief. I do like them, but overall, there's not much going on in this movie. But, like, if you want to see more above a bear and the world, then here's a movie that does that. And I am one of those people that loves seeing more to do with characters I love, even if one of their voices suddenly changes. I think as a continuation of a story, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't do anything to ruin it or anything, but you know where it's all going in the end. And there's no sense of danger, and the adventure of getting there is generic enough. But still, with that said, I'll give this movie a 5 out of 10 foxes. It's average to me, sure, I can nitpick, but I've seen worse in the end. And for me, a, f a 5 mean it means it's fine. I enjoyed it when I was younger. I pretty much begged my mum to get it since I loved the first one. She didn't, but it's okay. I got it in the end. <laughs> I'm glad I did watch it because it's a nice ending and key night story. And that's the most important thing. You know, again, as I said, for a continuation of the story, it works. It's fine. I liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Throw me a like and subscribe to my channel because I love you if you do. Hit that bell icon and this fox says, be who you want to be. Alright guys, bye for now.